you very much, everybody, for joining us here today. We really appreciate your openness to participate uh, on this new frontier of engagement that we're embarking on. We're really excited uh, to be able to still have this workshop and to still be able to speak with you and engage with you in these very early stages of developing the 2020 Regional Cycling Plan update for Durham Region. Um, again, this is our uh, wonderful sort of first attempt on a 30 plus stakeholder workshop online session. So I would just encourage you to bear with us in the event that uh, we come up with some technical difficulties. Uh, a couple things to note before we get started. I have put everybody on mute and that's not to prevent anybody from contributing by any means, but we will go through the presentation and then we will have some interactivity at the end of the presentation to answer three questions that we're going to be posing to you. One is about the development of the vision for cycling for Durham Region. The next is about the network and what that needs to look like and how it's changed since 2012, the plan was last developed. Um, and then last but not least, what we want to see included in the Regional Cycling Plan update, tools, uh, strategies, uh, emerging trends that we've seen over the past number of years and how that will be integrated into the plan itself. Uh, so we, again, will go through the presentation and then we will have some engaging discussion using Menti. So please have your smartphones at the ready. Uh, we will have some prompting notes on how to use that, um, as well as a new annotation tool uh, through this Zoom interface where you will actually be able to mark up our maps and add your comments right in this tool. So we think this will go very smoothly. If you have any issues, please let us know. If my computer decides it is going to cause the issues, my colleague Christina Valent will be taking over the presentation and will lead us onwards. If this entire program shuts down and we all are not able to access this program, then we will uh, follow up with maybe some alternate dates and times or we'll ask you to engage uh, with the materials we've provided. If anyone else loses network connectivity and is booted out, please come back in. Uh, we will admit you and the program will admit you right then and there. If there are any audio issues that you experience, please use that chat function. It's at the bottom of your screen under chat. It'll pop up in the bottom right hand corner. And please send the message over to myself or members of the team uh, that can answer those questions and follow up with you accordingly. And last but not least, all of our team will be monitoring our emails uh, in order to capture any questions that come through through that means as well. So I'm going to start the first possibility of fun technology and I am going to start our slideshow. Um, so bear with me for one moment, uh, but what you will hopefully see is the beginning slide of our slideshow on your screen. Excellent, I think we've done it. So once again, thank you very much for coming and joining us here today. We're really excited to start the conversation around the 2020 Regional Cycling Plan update for Durham Region. We have you here for the next two hours and we plan to make it a very informative and productive two hours for ourselves and yourselves as well and look forward to uh, talking about how we will move this plan forward. In terms of our agenda, uh, we're going to try a little bit of welcome and introductions uh, once we move on from this slide and we'll see how that goes, um, just to see who's on, on the call right now. Then we'll follow up with a presentation to provide you with an overview of the background and the foundations that we are basing the development of the 2020 RCPU on and how that fits in and has been thought about in the first part of our project. Then we're going to have a discussion uh, with everybody involved, prompted by those three questions that I talked about a little bit earlier. 
and then we're going to talk about next steps and taking any additional questions or comments. So welcome and introductions. Uh, I'm going to try my hand at uh, opening this up for conversation. So if uh, you wouldn't mind, uh, are you able to unmute yourselves or I'll unmute you one at a time. No, that's not a thing. I'm going to unmute everybody. And then if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself as we go around, uh, that would be excellent. So I'll just quickly stop sharing and then I'll pick up once again. Everyone is unmuted. Everyone is unmuted. And, and if you wouldn't mind, I'll start my talk from Whitby. It's Chris Bobman from Whitby, Town Dr. Transportation Supervisors. Glad to be here, Chris. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And hey, Jack. Hey, Jack. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Grab me to grab you here from the town of Ajax. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And there are a couple of other numbers. We have Durham Planning on the line. Hi, um, I'm Mike with uh, Durham Region Transit in the Service Design Department, and we're working on bike and ride sort of uh, posts at different stops to allow people to ride their bike and ride their bike. Wonderful. Let's see. I think we will go. We have Amy. Amy Hidal from the town of Whippy in Parks and Trails Development. Thank you. And then we have Adam or Anissa, pardon me. Yeah, we have Anissa Luckman from Region of Durham Policy Planning. Wonderful. And Andrew. Hi folks, Andrew Wismer here from uh, Durham Region Finance Department. Wonderful, thank you. And Carrie. Carrie? Sorry about that. My daughter was just FaceTiming me at the same time. <laughs> we, we get it. No problem. <laughs> Very Trump, you know, I had logged on with Facebook, so I have my maiden name from over 25 years ago also showing up there, but uh, from the Durham District School Board, and I apologize. I will have to log off for a bit. Um, do have another Zoom meeting scheduled for 3 to 3.30, but I'll come back um, and join you. No problem. And I should also have said that before. For anybody who is participating, we know there's a lot of competing things going on. So if you need to leave, not a problem at all. Uh, we're happy to accommodate in any way. Next, we have uh, Alia. Yeah, hi everyone. Alia Tullett from Durham Region uh, in the Transportation Planning Division. Great. Thank you very much. And I'm just trying to get through this whole list. This is wonderful. We have David. Hi, everybody. David Meyer. I'm the project manager with the Waterfront Regeneration Trust. Thank you. And John. Hey, I'm John Reed, supervisor of transportation with the town of Ajax. Thank you. Hey, John. Well, thank you. Josh. Hi. Josh, we're here, uh, Durham Region Traffic. Awesome, thank you. And Janet? Hi, it's Janet Moser from the Region of Durham, uh, Works Department Transportation Infrastructure. Thank you. And Jamie? Hi, it's Jamie Davidson, Director of uh, Watershed Planning and Natural Heritage from the Central Lake Ontario Conservation Authority. Thank you. And Caitlin? Caitlin Chow, I'm a project coordinator with Parks Canada. Thank you. And Kevin. Okay, next up, Kirsten. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, Kirsten Alor Ingle, and I'm a planner at the region of Durham. Thank you. Marlene. 
I'm uh, Marlene Kohler, Waterfront Regeneration Trust. I'm the executive director, and of course, our project is the Waterfront Trail. Thank you. And Michael. Hi, I'm Mike Jenkins, and I'm a graduate student at Ontario Tech University. Thank you very much. And I think I missed one. I apologize. I see a Lisa Flower, but I'm not sure if that's the right one based on my video screen. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Now you're unmuted. There we go. It's, uh, Sergeant Matt Flower from Durham Regional Police. I'm just uh, using my wife's Zoom computer because I'm now working from home. So Excellent. We have to be as creative as we can. So thank you. <laughs> Paul? Yeah. Hi, it's Paul G. Durham Region Works Department Transportation Design. So involved in the uh, design of many of the uh, cycling projects on regional right of ways. Awesome. Thanks very much. And I'm sorry, I think I missed Melanie previously. Hi, I'm Melanie Qualick. I'm the Climate Change Coordinator for Durham Region. Thank you very much. And I have a Regional Partnerships who's showing up. This is Angela Gibson from Metro Minks. Wonderful. And we're here um, particularly, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Brilliant, sorry. I usually use Zoom via my phone, so I'm using my computer today. Um, so we're here really interested in the uh, our station access um, connections between uh, your, your plan and our GO stations. Lovely, thanks very much. And then I have a Rob. Rob B. Okay. We'll move on to Sandra. Hello, everyone. Um, the Sturm Transportation Planning Section, a colleague of Anthony's and former uh, staffer who uh, helped to steward a lot of our cycling plans over the last few years. So um, part of the team is trying to keep it moving forward. Nice to meet everyone. Wonderful. Thanks very much. Next what? Next up is Shilpa. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, I'm Shilpa Dober. I'm a professor at the University of Ontario. I just screwed up the name of the institution, sorry. <laughs> Ontario Tech University. Uh, I'm in the kinesiology program and do quite a bit of research with older adults and in active transportation. Wonderful, thank you. And Steve? Hi everyone, uh, Stephen Kemp here with uh, Region of Durham. I manage the uh, the traffic group uh, at the region. Thank you. And we have Camelia. Not sure, or Doug. Hi, Doug Robertson, Region of Durham Works Department. I'm a project manager. Sorry, Doug. And then we have a couple of others who are on the line. I'm sorry, I, I just see phone numbers. So I will unmute everybody. And if you wouldn't mind just saying your name quickly, that would be very much appreciated. Uh, Greg Pereira from Durham Region, Manager of Transportation Planning. Thanks, Greg. Hi, it's Chris Jones. I'm with the Central Lake Ontario Conservation Authority. I'm the Director of Planning and Regulation there. Thank you. Hi, it's Tom Goody, City of Oshawa, Director of Planning Services. Thank you, Tom. Okay. Hi, Danielle. It's Michael Prevedel here, Durham Works. I work with Steve and Josh in the Road Safety Group. Thanks for including us. Thank you very much for joining. Okay. And Chris I promise Leeds from Region of Durham Planning. Thank you very much, Chris. Thanks. Last call. Going once, going twice. Okay, then we will continue with our presentation. And I'm just going to mute again, just in case. Uh, but I figured it would be irresponsible of us to 
uh, not introduce ourselves. Uh, so I will go over uh, our team members uh, in a little bit more detail. Uh, bear with me, I'm just going to quickly uh, mute everybody. And then, who knew a mute button would be so difficult? <clears throat> there we go. And then we'll get going. So a couple of our team members you will have uh, heard from already, but others uh, have been waiting in the wings. Uh, so we will go through the team in a little bit more detail. And uh, some of you may have worked with uh, some of us before uh, and others may not. So we will do a little bit of an overview of uh, ourselves and our roles. Uh, so Greg had already introduced himself as uh, the manager of transportation planning. Uh, he will be overseeing the development of the 2020 RCPU. Anthony Caruso, uh, who is a senior planner with the Region of Durham, he's going to be managing the development of this plan and providing direction. Uh, he's our day-to-day -day contact uh, from the consulting team to the region, uh, as well as Danielle Culp, who is uh, supporting the project manager from the region side. Um, if anybody wants to give a wave so that people can see you, you're welcome to do so. Uh, from the consulting team, we have not the entire team here, uh, but a good majority of us who have been working together over the past couple months with regional staff on the 2020 RCPU. We have Dave McLaughlin, who is the project lead. Want to give a wave, Dave? <laughs> uh, my name is Claire Bashinsky. Uh, I am supporting Dave in the project management of this project. Uh, and we have Justin Jones, who will be leading the engagement and facilitation uh, component as well as programming and outreach. He is with Share the Road Cycling Coalition and Christina Valent, uh, who is a supporting project coordination and will be supporting leading our network development process. So that's our team. We are all here today and we're ready to listen uh, and to hear your thoughts and to give you some background on the project, what we've been doing over the past couple of months and how we propose to move forward as we uh, start to develop the 2020 RCPU. So the next uh, couple of slides will be the background that we've been referencing on our project. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, what we've done so far, but also how we're going to be moving forward. Uh, and we hope that this will give you enough information to help answer the three questions that I had mentioned uh, earlier uh, that will be presented for interactivity at the end of the presentation. So how are we developing the 2020 RCPU? Uh, we have a three phrase process uh, that we are working through between uh, our initiation point, which was uh, earlier this year, uh, to uh, the winter and end of, of this year. Uh, so over the course of this year, we'll be going through these three phases. Uh, we will be working with you to inform key components of those phases, and we'll be reporting back to you on the findings of those phases. Uh, so you have a strong understanding and involvement in the project. It's really about building on what you already have, as you will see over the course of the next couple of slides, and refining it to bring Durham Region and its partners to a point, uh, a 2020 point, um, of where we're at now in terms of cycling and how that is approached from a planning, design, implementation, uh, and uh, coordination perspective. So why are we updating the plan? Why are we creating a 2020 RCPU? We've talked with staff, we have looked at the 2012 plan, and the reality is that quite a bit has changed over the past eight years when it comes to cycling, planning, design, implementation, master planning, etc. cetera. Um, and we want to make sure that what is developed and recommended through the 2020 plan is is a re-envisioning for cycling for the region and, and that it builds upon the policies and plans that have come into place since 2012 and is, is really looking to uh, highlight, enhance, and uh, provide the region with the tools that it needs to, to move forward. Uh, we're looking to support strategic directions at the regional level 
Uh, we know that there are a lot of new trends that have emerged and, and things that have changed since 2012. And we want to make sure that we don't just align with the 2017 TMP, but, but other strategic planning documents you have in place. We want to make sure that we're integrating new cycling trends and lessons learned, um, not only within your backyard and, and from your municipalities and, and partners, but uh, maybe a little bit further afield as well. Uh, there are quite a few new trends that have uh, come forward, even in the last five years, uh, that are really changing the conversation around cycling. We want to make sure that we're establishing support uh, to coordinate between upper and lower tier municipalities, but also to coordinate internally and externally, uh, making sure that you have the tools to be able to facilitate that coordination and work together. Uh, we want to make sure that there is alignment with accepted design guidelines and standards. Uh, since that 2012 plan, there have been provincially accepted nationally accepted, locally accepted design guidelines and standards related to cycling that have changed the way we look at how facilities are designed and at how uh, we plan for and implement cycling infrastructure. And we want to make sure that this plan is consistent with those standards and guidelines and also applies those in a context specific way for Durham region. And last but certainly not least, uh, we want to make sure that we establish public and stakeholder buy-in to make sure that the plan reflects local priorities and needs. Uh, it can sometimes be hard for a plan to be everything for everyone, but we want to make sure that it is at least something for each of the audiences that we're trying to engage and, and actively uh, bringing into this process. So what you'll see over the next couple slides is a highlight of what we've been doing over the past couple of months and relating those back to the five goals that we've just presented to you, as well as a overview of how we plan to move those forward. So in terms of goal number one, we're not starting from scratch. We're not reinventing the wheel here. We are starting from the 2012 RCP. And there were three core components of that plan uh, and three elements that, uh, that that plan highlighted. Uh, these were great components that uh, were providing direction on planning design implementation, as I spoke to before, and communication to some extent. Uh, however, this was eight years ago and, and a lot has changed. And master plans now tend to touch on a wider array of topics, provide that guidance, and uh, outreach. And I think we can be a bit critical because members of our team on the call were developers of that plan. So we're taking a, a strong look at, uh, at, what we, at what we developed and with you and, uh, and looking at how this can be reflected with uh, new trends and new, new approaches. And since that time as well, uh, there has also been another plan that has been quite impactful for cycling that has been adopted, your TMP at the regional level. Uh, and that TMP uh, provides a more recent set of transportation directions and recommendations. Um, it provides a high level guidance on issues within specific geographic areas, but it's, it's also, uh, it is a TMP, so uh, it doesn't necessarily get into the specifics of a, a typical cycling master plan level. It provides a very strong foundation for the rationale of why uh, we would be looking to invest and enhance cycling, um, but a cycling plan does give that level of detail. So we're looking to ensure that we build upon these seven directions and uh, where possible uh, optimize or provide additional detail on them. And in that TMP document, uh, there were some suggestions around uh, additional routes to the previously adopted RCP, Regional Cycling Plan Network. Um, it was not meant to be a comprehensive update by any means, uh, but those four key connections were identified because of input and demand and, and partner input as well, based on our knowledge. Um, and we will be using this network as the basis uh, for the update uh, to the 2020 RCPU. Uh, we'll go into a bit more detail on that approach uh, in the next couple of slides, uh, but it will be the foundation as it is the most recent look at, uh, at the cycling network to date. 
So goal number two, integrating new cycling trends and lessons learned. As I've mentioned before, uh, there are quite a few new trends and areas uh, of focus that cycling touches on um, that we, our team and others have been researching and, and gaining knowledge on. Uh, these are only some of the trends that we're seeing, but are some of the most prominent ones. Community-based social marketing, highlighting opportunities for audience and geographic, spe geographic specific uh, targeted uh, marketing and outreach and promotional strategies, complete streets, uh, the consideration of appropriate or all modes uh, within the design of a corridor, transit-oriented design, the consideration of uh, scalable uh, land use planning to enhance and accommodate transit-focused um, equity, the consideration of allowing people the ability uh, to be part of a process and uh, elements to enhance that ability. First and last mile, the consideration of the last kilometer of travel and, and what that means and how active transportation can be part of that. All ages and abilities, uh, identifying and designing for people in a range of ages, but also a range of, of abilities, quite literally. Micromobility, uh, the presence of e-bikes and other uh, vehicles of that nature uh, and, and what that means uh, from a design perspective. Climate adaptation and mitigation measures from a transportation perspective as well as um, others uh, that allow for not only uh, planning in the current stage but thinking about how we can, can do better. Vision Zero, uh, the concept of safety and how to reduce the number of conflicts and specifically fatalities uh, to a to a zero or around their level. And tactile urbanism, um, very simple but effective uh, design measures that can be implemented uh, in place uh, that, that demonstrate the change that could be made quite immediately. So as I said, these are not the only trends. We know there are others, but these are some that we are going to be looking at and, and entertaining uh, through the consideration of the 2020 RCPU. And how are we going to be doing that? Well, we're going to try and learn from others uh, before we try and tailor these recommendations uh, to the specific Durham, Durham region context. And we know that there's a lot of work being done in different areas. Uh, so we're going to be undertaking a best practices review uh, to identify what those lessons are and, and what others uh, have experienced and how that can be integrated. Uh, we're going to be looking to roll that out uh, in the next uh, couple of weeks, next month, uh, so that we can create that foundation uh, to develop the recommendation specific to Durham region. And in addition to that, we've already started to look at some of these trends in a little bit more detail um, and look at how we can start to consider them. Uh, more specifically from this Vision Zero perspective, we've started to identify and map specific conflict areas where we would need to see possible design interceptions um, to plan for and try and enhance overall user safety. Uh, these types of conflicts that you'll see here, there are six of them, uh, were identified based on a process that we went through uh, through the province-wide cycling network as well as through more detailed discussions uh, within this specific area. And these are typical uh, types of physical barriers that could prevent present a conflict or create a conflict for cyclists along a network. And we want to be able to look at these locations, look at how that interacts with the network, and look at what we can do to try and reduce that potential conflict and increase and improve uh, the sense of or the reality of safety for those users. We are also looking at the types of cyclists and who will be using the network and how it will be used, covering sort of the alternate users in micromobility as well as the all ages and abilities. I think I'd be remiss to say that things are, if I didn't say things are changing and how people are getting around, especially right now, uh, is changing. I just saw somebody on rollerblades for the first time outside my window today. Um, so while that's not cycling, we are seeing how people use cycling in a very interesting and different way. And I think it's important to note that you know, not all cyclists, as we all know, are 
the same all the time. I am both a sports cyclist as well as a vulnerable cyclist when I ride with my son. Uh, so we need to make sure that we are providing opportunities for everyone um, as well as opportunities for um, a range of different types of users. I see a comment about e-scooters in here. Thank you very much for your question. Um, so the e-scooters will be part of a discussion around e-mobility and micro-mobility that we'll be looking to investigate uh, through the process. And uh, we actually published a white paper, um, Dave McLaughlin did with some colleagues of ours, about what that looks like right now. Um, and we'd be happy to share that with you. But we'll be looking through that best practices review to understand what others are doing, uh, looking at that white paper and other resources and references to understand a little bit more about how that could be addressed in a meaningful way at the Durham region level. And I just see a comment noting that the region is exploring the legal framework to permit e-scooters and e-bikes. Uh, so thank you very much for that update and could be part of our conversation later. Thank you very much. Time to jump ahead of me. Last but not least, uh, we are also looking at as part of this first uh, phase of work, uh, the demand uh, within the region for cycling. And, and we have used Strava as only one part of that assessment. We'll be, we'll be enhancing and, in, and complementing that with, with other considerations and input from the public and, and others. Um, but this is a starting point for us. We know that it's subjective, um, but it gives us a good sense of where people are traveling and at what frequency and gives us an opportunity to better understand the origins and destinations and to try and leverage that knowledge to understand if there are short distance trips that could be made uh, more often than not uh, by cycling uh, in this case. So uh, we're starting to have a better understanding of, of where the cycling is happening uh, to some extent and, uh, and how we can improve that. Goal number three, establishing support for coordination between upper and lower tier. Um, we have worked on a number of projects uh, for both levels of government and we understand the uh, opportunities, uh, challenges and needs uh, that, that arise along with that. And similar to one of the statements I made earlier, a lot has changed since 2012 and, and to your municipal credit, uh, there are a lot of new plans in place uh, that we need to make sure are reflected uh, in, in this plan and, and respected in this plan as well. Uh, so we have started the process of looking at those plans uh, and looking at what those recommendations are and the process of integrating uh, that into this particular update. In addition to that, uh, this is just a little bit of an FYI. Uh, we're also going to be reaching out to municipal staff to better understand your most recent experiences, whether it's related to uh, the region's plan or your own plans or what you've seen emerging, uh, what you're responsible for and, and how that would be impacted by this plan and, and what you think uh, needs to be maybe improved or addressed through this process. So over the next couple of weeks, Justin and I and Christina and others will be reaching out to you uh, to schedule some discussions around that, uh, around those questions uh, to better understand how this plan can be the most effective going forward for all partners involved. In terms of alignment with accepted guidelines and standards, uh, this is probably the heaviest part of the slide deck uh, because uh, this part of our project uh, really focuses on the network and also how we're going to be designing cycling facilities and we'd like everybody to have an understanding of how we're going to be approaching that uh, before we start embarking on the actual details. So as I said before, uh, we are building on what has already been done. We are building on the 2012 plan. We are building even more specifically on the 2017 plan and we're working towards a 2020 network that is confirming and refining existing routes uh, that is looking at what was previously recommended and refining that to make sure that it is in alignment with new guidelines and standards. And like I said before, there is a lot that has emerged since that time. 
And there's a lot that has changed since that time. We've been really lucky to develop internally within the province of Ontario a number of guidelines and standards that have been informed by municipal input um, that have been informed by the, the needs of, of those who will be using it. Uh, and so we are looking to those guidelines, looking to those documents uh, to give us uh, the direction that we need to uh, update the network and to update the facility types. Uh, and we'll be referring back to these documents uh, consistently throughout our process. I've mentioned before that we're building on the 2017 specifically, um, the 2017 RCP uh, network and refinements. And in that 2017 document, there were three core components of the network. The first were existing routes. The second were short-term cycling routes that were proposed both in the RCP and the TMP. And the third were long-term cycling routes. And there are three unique but somewhat similar approaches that we're going to be using to address uh, these components. And we're gonna go through those in the next three slides. So how are we going to review and confirm and refine, if needed, the existing cycling routes? Well, first, we're going to update the existing cycling network to reflect networks that have emerged since that time. So we'd be looking to the municipalities and other partners to help us to identify where those changes have been made and what has uh, come up and been recommended since that time. Uh, that'll be part of the interactive exercise, but we also encourage you through the interviews and next steps to please uh, inform us of all of those updates that have been made. And then we want to make sure that we are, that we have an existing priority cycling network as part of the regional plan that is consistent with current guidelines and standards. So we're going to look at the priority cycling network that was identified, and we're going to determine if there are improvements that need to be made. So we're going to look at regional and municipal roads, and we're going to go through uh, the OTM Book 18 process uh, to determine if there is a necessary uh, enhancement that needs to be made, um, and if so, what that would look like. So in terms of what the outcomes would be for this first step, we'd be looking to revise the existing cycling network in terms of the mapping, and we'd be looking to propose upgrades uh, where appropriate and where in line with current guidelines and standards. In terms of the second step, or the second part, which is looking at the short-term routes that were identified, there are two components to this exercise. In the TMP, there were two types of projects that were identified, planned capital projects and infill projects. For the planned capital projects, we're going to be looking to staff and other partners to review and confirm if those are still consistent with what is being planned or if there's any changes that have been made. For the infill projects, we're going to be looking at two different components. The first are infill projects that were identified on the regional roads. And we're gonna assess whether or not those are still viable projects. We're going to look at a set of criteria uh, consistently we're going to look at a spatial analysis that we'll be undertaking, and we're also going to be considering our field investigation context-specific considerations. And so some may remain, uh, some may be removed. Um, we're going to determine what that looks like on specifically those regional roads. And then on municipal roads, there are another two subcomponents to that. We are going to look at those connections that are identified uh, on municipal roads, but we're really going to focus primarily on strategic regional connections, should there be appropriate funding or available funding that could be provided. But we know that there are a lot of wonderful municipal plans that have been adopted and concurrent implementation strategies that are happening. So we want to respect those and we want to reflect those. Um, so for the most part, we could see many of those uh, being identified mostly in those local municipal plans. However, there could be some that are identified as very important strategic regional connections, uh, which we will be determining based on conversation and consultation uh, with municipal representatives and regional staff. So in terms of the outcomes for part two, we're looking at an updated list of capital projects 
and we're also looking at a revised set of infill projects on primarily regional roads, but maybe some select local municipal roads. Then we have the third and final part, uh, the long-term routes that were identified. And again, two components to this. There were previously proposed uh, long-term routes uh, that we are going to be investigating to determine whether or not they're still viable, similar to the short-term assessment, if the criteria, the spatial analysis and field investigation. But we'll also be looking to see if there are any missing links that maybe we hadn't considered in the previous uh, plan development. So we'll be looking to take input that we gather from the engagement process, as well as looking at some of those high demand routes uh, to determine if there are any missing links that could form part of these longer term strategic uh, connections that we've seen. The outcomes to this process are a refined set of those long term cycling projects. So after each of those three parts are completed in terms of uh, the steps that I just outlined, it actually gets all of those refined sets of projects to the same point. It gets it to the point where we need to decide what the appropriate facility type uh, would be in that specific location. And we're going to be using the same approach uh, for each of those uh, proposed routes. We're going to be using the three-step process that's identified in Ontario Traffic Manual Book 18. You may have seen this before or some permutation of this slide before, um, but uh, we just wanted to outline it in the event that some had not seen it. So the first step is to pre-select a level of separation, and that's based on a uh, volume and speed on the roadway analysis. We now have an urban and a rural uh, assessment, uh, so it is a little bit more context specific based on the updated guidelines that is that will be forthcoming. Uh, next, once you have that identification of the level of separation, we look at the context in a bit more detail. We have examples of what that sort of assessment would look like, and we start working towards rationalizing what the specific facility type could be based on those additional context specific considerations. And then last but not least, once we come to that recommendation, we document why that was recommended and we provide rationale for that recommendation to ensure that that is part of the documented process, which will evidently be part of the 2020 RCPU. Again, I won't go through this in too, too much detail, but this is the spectrum uh, or some elements of the spectrum of types of facilities that are now being entertained. Um, I'm not seen in here, but included in and around the uh, uh, buffered cycle track option uh, are some of the other options around a physical separation. Um, and we will be seeing some of those, especially on some of the higher order roads. Uh, but we will respect the process and we will be working through the process to determine what is going to be most appropriate uh, in specific locations uh, and most appropriate based on the context in which the facilities are being identified and being designed. And all of that will be respectful of the types of users that we're hoping to uh, interest in those types of corridors and those types of routes, as well as input from the public and stakeholders uh, as we work through the process. And I promise, I promise that was the most in-depth part of the presentation. Uh, the rest, I hope, will go by a bit more smoothly in terms of the number of slides. Uh, but goal number five, establishing public buy-in to determine local priorities and needs. Uh, we are working through a consultation and engagement process, which I was talking to Justin a little bit earlier today. This is kind of the launch point for that. Uh, we're having the stakeholders come, come together in this meeting to, uh, to start having the meaningful conversations around what this plan is going to look like and we will then broaden out further uh, to make sure that we gather input from all of the intended audiences and those that, uh, that want to be part of the process. Obviously, right now, things are changing and I would not be doing my job if I didn't come out and say that honestly. Things are changing and uh, we respect that. And so we have been thinking of all of the different tools that are available to allow us to still have meaningful engagement through this process while being flexible and adaptive uh, to our possible new reality um, and as things 
maybe get back to normal, uh, that how we've changed in terms of how we're communicating, how we're interacting, and how we can ensure that we still get the wonderful input that we need to shape this plan. And speaking of shaping the plan, uh, we are developing a plan that provides you and your partners and others who will be interacting with it with the necessarily necessary tools, strategy, strategies, and recommendations that enable this to be a day-to-day -day plan um, and a resource for all those involved. Uh, we want to make sure that we're not only understanding the needs, but also providing the necessary supports uh, in each of these very critical areas. And we want to start this conversation today to better understand what those needs are and to better understand what could be included in this plan to make it a success and, and make it something that, that provides you with what you need in order to move forward and, and utilize it over the next five, 10 years. So that is all for me in terms of my talking. Thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate it. I'm going to go out of presentation mode merely to unmute people and to bring up our first uh, interactive opportunity, which is the Menti tool. So bear with me. Okay. Um, so the first question that we have, and I'm going to share my screen now, will be, and has everybody got their smartphones with them? If you could go to www.menti.com if you haven't done so already, that would be very much appreciated. And can you see the screen? The first question is, when you think of the vision or a vision for the 2020 RCPU, what words come to mind? And this will start to- Sorry, mine is asking for a code and I'm not sure what it is. The code is on the top of the screen and it is 900745. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I have provided no restrictions for the number of responses. So, vision away. That's a pretty good first word to start with. Thank you, whoever contributed that. Oh, great. This is wonderful. Thank you, everybody. We'll just keep this open for a couple minutes longer. I know we have about 44 participants on the call, and I'm seeing the numbers go up swiftly. I think one of the things that, and I encourage any of my colleagues to jump in that we have seen consistently over the past five, 10 years is the need for connectivity and the need to have people be able to access where they need to go and what, what they need to do to get there. Does anybody have any specific thoughts or feedback beyond uh, this mentee tool that they'd like to share? If you'd like to let me know in the chat, um, if you have a thought or a comment, we'd love to hear from you. OK. 
Okay. Not seeing any um, notes in the chat, but please feel free to use that if, uh, if you would like as we go forward. Uh, what we're going to be doing here using these wonderful contributions, thank you so much, um, is that we're going to be developing and refining um, the vision statement that, that we are creating. And we'll share that with you once we've done so uh, to make sure that we're on the right track and to make sure that this is a vision statement that's built uh, on the input of all of those that are involved thus far. Um, so we really appreciate the contribution and we really appreciate that, uh, that this will hopefully be shaped by all of your input. Um, Justin, thank you for your uh, question. I'm unmuting you. Did you have a comment to note? And thank you, I got a comment saying um, transit supportive uh, that, uh, that we should consider that in, in the chat. So thank you very much for that contribution. Um, as we said in the emerging trends, the interplay and interaction uh, between transit and cyclists and, and other road users, um, depending on the context, is, is absolutely something that we are aware of and the design around those spaces. Uh, we are learning much more about how to do that in, in a safe and comfortable way. Um, we look forward to engaging with, with others on how, how transit can be enhanced even further uh, in the interaction with cycling. Also hearkening to the first and last mile, um, the, the opportunities there. Unmuted, Justin. Oh, should be now. So I think, yeah, yeah. so I've been trying to like unmute, but every time I want to mute it, doesn't let me come back in. Uh, so I think I it's have because to authorize the unmuting. I apologize. Yeah. Um, Not speechless, one, Steve. Yeah, no, voiceless. Um, <laughs> one one thing that like if if you are unmuting all, then I would recommend everyone mute themselves um, and make sure. But then the other thing that is sometimes useful to know with with um, with Zoom is if you just press the space bar down. <laughs> Um, it actually unmutes you uh, just while it's held down. It's kind of like a walkie-talkie, so you can use it uh, that way as well. Genius. Thank you very much. Okay. So if there are no more contributions, thank you to everybody for the 62 uh, elements of the word cloud. We really appreciate it. We're actually going to be moving on to our second uh, our second question, which is what are the network related opportunities, challenges, barriers, uh, changes that have happened since 2012, since 2017 that need to be reflected? And here's where my blood pressure goes up slightly because we are trying something new. We are going to be using the annotation tool in Zoom. And I really hope this works. Um, I think it's still just noting the menti. Can everybody see the map on my screen? I see some nods, I think. File access exception, that doesn't make any sense. I apologize, everyone. Christina, do you happen to have the map up and running? Okay. We will open that up. So I, uh, I just got a question from uh, Chris. Thank you very much. Maybe we'll start with that as we try to open that up. So I believe this is Chris from Whitby. Why do we continue to promote cycling plans when the goal is urban mobility? Some kickback may come of serving the 2% mode split of bikes uh, when there is 20 to 30 non-auto mode split. I would like to make sure I open up um, these maps for all of us to use, but would any of my colleagues like to uh, provide some thoughts around that if we had any? Um, Dave, others, I'm happy to unmute as needed. Dave, okay. 
just unmute. There we go. Should be good there. Hi, everyone. Good question, mm -hmm. Chris. So the reality is most of the cycling plans we do now are really thinking about after transportation as well and the whole relationship between walking and cycling and urban mobility and first mile, last mile, either by on foot or cycling. If you think about the design of in Boulevard Multi's pathways very often shared with pedestrians. So even though, you know, the region has chose to call this cycling master plan update, um, the reality is that, uh, you know, we'll be looking at the interactions with all sort of non-motorized uh, uses to some degree because it's, it all has to be integrated. It's, it's applying the complete streets approach which I think Paul and others are very familiar with in terms of thinking about not just in the planning, but also in the design of infrastructure. So uh, hopefully that partially answers your question, Chris. Chris, was that helpful? Did you have any follow-up question? No, that's great for partners locally in town. I'm sorry, I lost you a little bit there. I apologize. Going on? Am I good? Um, not as much, uh, but if you'd like to type that in, um, I'm happy to relay it. I can just type it. Okay. So, right. Right. I can talk if you can hear me. If you can hear me, just not. Uh, we can we can hear you, but it's uh, difficult. Okay. I'll just type. Okay, thank you. So we are pulling up the maps as we speak as well. And then we will share screen when we get to that point. Um, and we have a question from Marlene. Thank you very much. Will the province-wide network be integrated into the plan? And uh, thank you very much for the question. And the answer short is absolutely. Uh, any regionally significant uh, trails cycling network connectivity and local networks. I think I just experienced what I feared would happen, which is that I shoved myself off. So uh, my apologies for that. Uh, we got another response from Dave if we hadn't heard uh, the original response. Absolutely that we will be looking at the network. Uh, questions are great to please submit via typing um, and we are continuing to monitor. Um, so in terms of pulling up the network, um, we seem to be having some trouble, but I will try once again uh, to do so. In the meantime, if you are able to, we're going to bring up the second question and the third question and make that our our second question. So uh, we have another mentee question that we'd like to put to you. Um, and the question is, what are the emerging trends, tools, and topics that you think should be addressed? I think we've talked of a couple of them already, um, but I'm just going to move to the next quest mentee question and I'm going to share my screen. So we are building on uh, what we had mentioned on a previous slide about the different uh, trends that we've seen and where you think we should spend our time investigating and recommending for Durham Region. The code once again is 900745 uh, and we'll have an opportunity to recommend others in the next slide. So for now, do you think we should look at community-based social marketing? equity, first last mile, all ages and abilities. Let us know what you think. And thank you as always with your patience for our technical nuances. Pardon me. Oh, great. Thank you very much.
I always love these for the visuals. They're so great. And we'll give it another minute or so. Great. So the next question we're going to ask building upon that is, is there anything that you think we have missed? Are there topics that you've been hearing about that you think are important to address that you think we should manage and address? So that's our next question. Same code. Add your thoughts, other trends, tools, and topics that we are missing thus far that we can start to consider. I have a question in here about uh, where would winter cycling fit in? So I think that that is a bit of a trend, the conversation around uh, whether or not we hear about uh, fat tires or fat, fat tire bikes or others, uh, but also the practice of maybe winter cycling networks or seasonal cycling options. So even though it's, you know, not necessarily uh, something brand new, uh, but I think it's something that we need to continually consider on how we can accommodate. So thank you. That's a great suggestion. Wonderful. Oh, we're going to scroll down, see what some of those are. And give that another minute or so. Oh, great. My internet connection is unstable. That sounds promising. Okay. This is excellent. Can be funny bike sharing, e bike regulation. And what we'll be doing uh, after this is, is taking all of these and uh, looking through uh, to see what the consistent themes are that have emerged, um, organizing them into the appropriate categories. And as part of this exercise, we are actually developing four to six, uh, depending on what we confirm. Uh, more detailed strategies that will speak to specific topic areas. Um, and so this input is very important and helpful as we work towards deciding what those strategies are going to be and what specific topics we're going to be addressing uh, through those strategies. Uh, all of them will be integrated into the RCPU uh, in terms of recommendations. Uh, for how we plan to move forward, but they will be a bit more of a deep dive into those topic areas uh, to better understand what the external context is, the internal context, uh, and what could be done uh, going forward specific to Durham Region and its partners. So thank you very much for your contribution on this. I'm seeing some more coming through. That is great. Okay. I did manage to find those maps. They are working and available. So I'm excited to say I think we can move on to our uh, mapping exercise. And again, this was the activity that was uh, going to give me the most anxiety. So bear with me. Um, can people now see the maps on the screen? If you can and you want to flash me a thumbs up, that would be really great. Wonderful. So we have a map, evidently, of the uh, full region and the information that we've been able to gather uh, related to the existing cycling conditions. Uh, I say that very strongly in terms of what we've been able to gather because 
there are likely pieces of information that you may have or some may have that uh, is necessarily not necessarily reflected uh, in this mapping currently, but we'd like to make sure that it does. Uh, so if you go to uh, the top of your screen, uh, there are options for, or my screen, there's options for annotation. And what I can do is we can add, or you can add um, comments, draw lines, add text, uh, and include your comments and your thoughts specifically on the network um, as it stands right now. So what we're going to try and do is a little bit of a facilitated conversation around that. So I would ask that if you would like to annotate the map, to add any comment, any question um, that you identify in the chat that you would like to add something. And then I will unmute you so that you can include your comment and also include your annotation. So would anybody like to start marking up the map um, and start providing your thoughts and your comments on the network? Um, I'm going to quickly cancel out of this just for now in terms of the annotation uh, and zoom out. And I can also give control to that person. So if you'd like to do that, uh, we would love for you to add your comments and love for you to interact in this new way um, that we have available to us. So any takers so far? Please know that this isn't your only opportunity we have the map sent out to you electronically and you are more than welcome to make markups on those maps following our meeting. In fact, we encourage you to do so. And once again, we will be following up with the municipalities and staff um, later to ask more questions about the nuances of the network. So any takers? There are, I know for a fact, uh, plans that have been adopted that by the local municipalities that uh, would not necessarily be reflected. Uh, this is the regional cycling network. Oh, who's saying hi? We've got a comment already. Chris, would you like to mark that up? Can you do that on the map? Or uh, would you like me to give you control? Okay, so that is uh, Whitby North Town Line to Pickering Concession 7. It's a difficult offset intersection, definitely. Um, and uh, if you'd like, I can pass over control uh, to mark that up, or would you prefer that we just take that comment away with us? Okay. Any others? Try to mark up, perfect, thanks Chris. I will just give you the capability to mark up. Okay, we will remote control. There you go, if you'd like to zoom in and mark up, you're able to do so. That's great. Thanks very much uh, for your, oh, it won't zoom. Oh. Maybe at the bottom of the screen, Chris, um, with the zoom, that might uh, work. And thank you for those who have been commenting in the chat. Uh, we see them and we'll be taking the notes from the chat to uh, to also mark up the maps. So if you would prefer to submit that way, you're more than welcome to do so. Um, we encourage that as well. Okay, 
if there are issues with um, with marking up, not a problem. Uh, we can also, like I said, uh, make those changes our, ourselves in the uh, in the network, or add those comments in. And there was a comment about the overlay of local municipal routes. Thank you very much for that. And we absolutely agree um, that will be our next step. I believe that when we follow up with some of the local municipalities, we have access to some of that information, uh, but for others, we do not. Um, so we will be looking uh, for your partnership on that matter. Um, in terms of the annotation, Chris, you can either use the pen at the top or if you wanted to use, I'm taking control again, the actual annotation tool in uh, Zoom, that is also a possibility too. And the comment about the Great Trail, um, excellent uh, comment. Thank you very much for the note. Um, that would be going along the lines of any of the regionally significant um, corridors uh, that we will continue to add as we work through the process. So uh, absolutely uh, something we will be adding here. Wonderful. We're getting there and you can hear my dog, so my apologies. I'm just going to exit out of this. And thank you. We see another note. Okay, we will follow up on that that note, Chris. Thank you for trying. I really appreciate it. Um, we will follow up on that specific uh, area uh, with you later. So thank you. Um, I'm just going to scroll through the comments because uh, we did receive a couple. So thank you so much. Um, so Colleen, uh, there was a, a comment submitted from here. Did you want to mark up the map or uh, would you like to uh, just provide your comment written uh, or verbally? Do you have a preference? I'm not sure if I can, we can hear you on this one. Okay, we have the note in the comments, so thank you very much uh, for those. Were there any other interested parties in this somewhat new technology space? And again, we can gather comments afterwards using the PDF. So we're just gonna zoom out so that we can see the full map. And if this can easily be um, solved by, as I suggested, uh, having the overlay of the local municipal networks, which is absolutely our next plan and strategy, um, I think that that would be very helpful and uh, would be ideally our next step so that we can start to work through the existing step one uh, process that we'll be working through for the network itself. And thank you very much uh, for the offer to provide the GIS. Thank you for the save to the annotations note. We really appreciate it. And we will absolutely uh, go to the trail strategy information. Thank you, Adam, um, on the uh, provided uh, website. So thank you very much for database. Okay. So I think that this is um, was a fun attempt at this type of tool. It can be a bit daunting to try and do something like this. Um, I understand that. We thought it might be an interesting opportunity, but also want to allow people to take the time to digest the information and take the time to think about exactly what they're going to put on the maps, if anything, or follow up comments. So in that interest, um, I'll leave this up for a mere moment longer but um, we absolutely will be providing the mapping afterwards and we'll be following up, as I mentioned, with municipalities and other stakeholders to better understand not only the network uh, enhancements, but uh, further to that, uh, any of the other options or opportunities for enhancement around coordination and collaboration going forward. Um, I see one other comment that's come in. Uh, so thank you very much, Marlene. The Upbridge, Upbridge Pickering Town Line. 
uh, needing improvement along that greenbelt route. So uh, we really appreciate that and we understand that uh, there are certain areas uh, within the region where, as you can see in this map, uh, there are definite opportunities for enhancement and, and wider connectivity uh, when it comes to cycling. So that is absolutely uh, part of the either missing links exercise uh, in part three, as you recall, of the network assessment um, or uh, any of the consultation activities that we will be going through. And if you would prefer us to go through with you one-on-one -on -one, uh, with the mapping uh, or to have a more detailed conversation uh, beyond this, we would be happy to do so. Uh, like I said, we will be having those interviews, but um, happy to uh, have have that conversation if you think that would be most effective for for you providing your input. Okay. So I will just uh, bring up. Oh, I see one question come through. Another one. Thank you. Uh, more interregional connections be integrated or noted. Um, and that includes the example was given Uxbridge and Lindsay Peterborough. Great question, thank you very much. Um, absolutely, when it comes to missing links and when it comes to validating or highlighting and assessing uh, the previously proposed links, we're going to be looking to those surrounding areas to understand what they have identified uh, locally or uh, regionally slash county-wise or municipality-wise. Uh, and then also the province-wide cycling network, as well as any of the more regionally significant routes will also be helpful with that. So thank you very much for that question. Uh, we absolutely will be considering that. Uh, it's not just connecting within, in terms of the municipalities, but absolutely connecting to surrounding areas and making sure that it's the wider connectivity that we're experiencing. Uh, and that's both cycling as well as the multimodal connectivity as well. Um, so thank you. Great question. Absolutely a consideration that we'll be working towards and something that we'll be investigating. Thank you very much. We have another question. Could we consider some type of signature route or project like lake to lake? In our case, maybe lake to lake to lake. Love that, thank you. Um, I mean, we may be a little bit biased, but uh, a wonderful project and, and something that was really exciting to participate in. Um, and I definitely think that considering your wonderful geography, um, there are significant opportunities from a tourism perspective uh, that should definitely be leveraged. and. Uh, we are going to be looking at, as part of the implementation, priority corridors and priority connections, not just in the, the typical sort of short, medium, and long term, but from the wider goals perspective of the community. So whether or not that's tourism or day-to-day -day travel um, or, or otherwise, uh, are there opportunities for loop routes, uh, core, major corridors, uh, signature corridors like you've suggested, uh, or otherwise that can be explored. Uh, so definitely, I think that that would be a really great and interesting opportunity. Thanks, Steve. Any other comments or questions around that or uh, otherwise? Greg, thank you. Could we also consider a standardized cycling route signage across the region and local municipalities? Um, great question, thank you. Um, I think when we were starting to have a conversation around what those some of those strategies could look like, one of the ideas initially was around wayfinding and signage, not just from a standardized regulatory perspective, but from a branding. Uh, perspective and from a on and off road perspective. Uh, so it could be something that we would explore through one of those strategies uh, or something that we could uh, explore through consultation with the local municipalities and other partners uh, or both. Uh, so definitely think that that would be uh, something worth exploring, especially if we look to the previous question about the signature route. One of the reasons why the Lake to Lake route. Um, the many reasons why it had uh, quite a bit of success was the brand that got established around it. 
um, and the strong visual identity and uh, promotional uh, package that went along with that. Um, so I think those two are very well timed comments and definitely something that we can absolutely look at and will be will be looking at. Thank you very much. Any other um, thoughts by any of my colleagues uh, or uh, team members? I should remind us that I do unfortunately need to unmute you, so please let me know in the chat if you'd like to add some comments in there. <laughs> okay, I think my chat is relatively up to date, but I don't wanna cut anybody off. Um, were there any other questions, comments, um, general follow-ups? Uh, again, we're, thank you, Chris. Is the focus of the region more recreational or utility in nature? Um, I think this would be a good question to uh, open up to the rest of the team. Um, and I'll, I'll start. So I mentioned earlier in the presentation that we can't be everything for everyone, but that we're going to try as much as possible to provide opportunities for a wide range of cycling experiences. So what do I mean by that? Um, I think that we are going to be looking at, I know that we are going to be looking at the current and the proposed network quite, quite critically to understand what could be used by whom based on some initial assumptions around typical level of comfort uh, or safety uh, around, those, uh, around those routes and those facilities. So that's a long way of saying it's both. Um, I think that there will be opportunities for, and I know there will be opportunities for more regional uh, touring type routes uh, that would be more recreational in nature, um, building on the exceptionally strong off-road trails, Greenbelt route, waterfront trail, and otherwise. Um, and then also some more focused first and last mile or short distance trips that could be used more for utility. So especially at this scale, uh, there are a lot of opportunities, but that's also why it's really important to have such a strong and effective partnership with the municipalities, because in many cases, um, there will be connectivity that needs to be achieved for those utility trips for those shorter distance trips and some of those touring routes at the local municipal level. Uh, so that is one of the reasons why we start this conversation early uh, with yourselves and why we want to continue to have those, pardon me, my dog just walked itself in, um, why we want to continue to have those conversations going forward. Um, and also, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that uh, we want to make sure that it's back to your comment previously, Linkages to transit, um, both local as well as wider, are achieved. Um, so finding those opportunities where uh, maybe it isn't realistic to have people cycle all the way to work, but can we try and use cycling as a first leg of the trip to enhance the possibilities of uh, utility trips outside of the single occupancy vehicle or outside of the vehicle? Thank you. That was a really great question. And for those who ask questions, please let me know if I haven't answered it appropriately or if you feel like uh, there's more of a follow-up question that's needed, happy to answer that or have our team members answer that. We've got some good idea sharing on the chat board, so I like that, that's excellent. Probably better than my annotations, so thank you. Okay, so I'm seeing a little bit of a slowdown in the comments um, and I don't want to uh, have people uh, feel like they're uh, not being engaged enough. So I think what I will do is I will pull up our presentation so that we can go through just a couple of the remaining slides. Uh, so I will just bring that up currently. So thank you very much once again for bearing with us in terms of the technology. We really, really appreciate it. Um, we are also learning. So uh, thank you again. And, uh, and we promise we'll get even better for next time if we need it. Hopefully we can meet in person next time. 
So how are we moving forward? Uh, we are going to be moving forward with the uh, completion of, uh, of part one of our project using this really helpful input. Thank you once again for uh, providing that and, and a reminder to please continue to provide your input if you have additional thoughts or comments uh, going forward. Uh, and so we are going to be summarizing what we hear today and we're going to be looking at moving forward with those municipal interviews as well as the best practices review uh, that we mentioned through the presentation. Uh, we're going to be launching our online engagement tool and uh, we're going to be using that as a means of gathering input uh, and that'll be based on, put onto our project website uh, that you will have seen through a number of our communications. Uh, that also has an interactive mapping component that seems to be far easier than this annotation. So I would also encourage you to take a look at that um, if you are able to, and, and also share that if you can. Uh, we'd really appreciate your support uh, promoting this project and uh, letting people know that this is happening, even though uh, things are changing quickly and often uh, these days. Uh, but that'll be a really key component to starting to understand what people want and need from a general uh, resident and uh, actual user's perspective uh, locally. Uh, so we will be uh, issuing that public survey uh, MetroQuest tool uh, in the next day or so, and we'll let you know uh, as soon as possible. Uh, the website will be updated tomorrow and a PDF of the presentation, as well as a recording of me talking for an hour and a half will also be uploaded to that site too. So uh, if you'd like to relive the experience and, and hear some of the elements of the presentation over again, uh, all of those will be available uh, and we'll send it a link to that going forward. And then we'll be moving forward with the uh, documentation of what we've heard through the first um, phase and uh, we will be looking at uh, letting you know when that's ready for your review and consideration. So I see a couple of things uh, that have come through in the chat since I've talked to. Um, thank you for those who were able to stay this long. We really appreciate it. Um, we appreciate your time and your flexibility uh, to allow us to do this. I know we've all been learning how to navigate uh, how we're engaging and, and how we're able to stay in connection and in contact. So thank you very much uh, from all of us uh, for your openness to this and from your, uh, for your offering of input. We really, really do appreciate it. Um, and if you do, like I said, have any questions, any comments, any input that you would like to provide going forward, um, any of our team members, Danielle, Anthony, Greg, myself, Justin, Dave, or Christina are more than happy uh, and would love to hear from you. And you may hear from us sooner rather than later um, for those who will be part of the local municipal interviews and otherwise. So unless I see any other comments in the chat screen, which seems to have been the most effective tool today, uh, we really appreciate your time. We really appreciate your effort and uh, we look forward to working with you over the next couple of months uh, towards the end of the year to develop the 2020 RCPU uh, together in a really collaborative way. So thank you very much. We'll stay online a little bit longer if you need us and uh, if not, thanks again and stay safe, stay healthy and uh, stay light and excited as much as we can. <laughs> thanks so much everybody.